Here is an example of working through implementation constraints with MATLAB Coder. Here we have the newton rathson method, which is a well-known numerical algorithm for calculating the square root of a number. So for example, if we wanted to find the fourth root of the number 256, uh, this is how we would execute it. Uh, another way, uh, it actually also takes uh, a third variable. So let's say we want to find the fourth root of the number 10 uh, with a specified tolerance, which is that third variable. This is what we get. So taking a look at NRT, this was uh, pre-written ahead of time. We'll go through that. Uh, you'll see that it takes two variables uh, through var arg in. It needs at least two variables, and there's a possible third variable. Uh, if none is specified, we'll use the uh, default tolerance. Coming back down here, uh, this calls another function, the search algorithm. So let's take a look. So over here, you'll see that. Here we take an initial guess on line 7. Coming further down, there's a big while loop as it goes through and iterates. Uh, line 12 here, this computes the derivative. And uh, within this while loop, uh, it's not going to run on forever. And in fact, it'll break out after a maximum of 50 iterations. So that's how it runs. Um, before we generate code, uh, again, I'm going to create just a, a simple test bench. In fact, we'll reuse the uh, last command that we just were using. We'll call it test bench. And here we go. That's exactly what we were expecting. So now let's go ahead and try to generate code for uh, Newton, uh, the NRT algorithm. I'll specify again in rt.m. Uh, and uh, this is a step that we didn't see previously, but um, what actually happens before we get to the next step of specifying the data types is that MATLAB Coder will go through and review your code generation readiness. So in this case, it found two issues, and uh, we need to review these before we move forward. Coming down, clicking on these error messages, you'll see that both of them uh, are saying the same things. And uh, if you take a look at this, what happens is initially we never specified how big the uh, variable h is. And as we go through the while loop, you'll see that h keeps expanding as we go through. So it grows from one element to two elements to three and so on. So uh, this works in, C in MATLAB but it will not work in uh, C code because we need to specify it ahead of time. Uh, we need to specify the size of it. So in this case, it's pretty simple fix. We know that there are a maximum of 50 iterations, uh, and so we can pre-allocate uh, H2 have a max of 50 elements. So once we modify it, let's take a look, and the code generation readiness tool says there are no further issues, and then we can move forward. So back again to the um, defining the input types, uh, we could input it ourselves if we wanted to, but uh, once again, I'll go ahead and use the auto define feature since it's so handy. Once that's done, um, this is one step that we uh, jumped over in the previous example, uh, but here I'll show it to you. Here, uh, this is a step to check for runtime issues, and this is actually quite important. Um, and this step is to be able to see if there are any potential runtime issues that may result even if you're able to generate code. So what happens in the background uh, as this is running is that it's going to create a MEX function for your uh, for uh, the MATLAB algorithm. From there, uh, it's going to then invoke the MEX function using a test bench you specified. And if there are any issues, it will be reported here. So this is important because uh, even though you may be able to generate code, uh, depending on how you create the algorithm, you may uh, inadvertently uh, introduce runtime uh, errors in your generated code. So by going through this step, this will flag any potential runtime issues that you may see. So in this case, there are no further issues, so we can move forward. Uh, over here, 
In this case, we're going to generate a static library. So we were able to generate code successfully. Here's our original MATLAB uh, algorithm along with Newton uh, search algorithm.m. And with our generated code, I'll maximize that. We'll call them further down. Here's our NRT uh, function. Going through the initializations, uh, which you see down here. This is what we saw before doing the initial guess and coming further down you can see it kind of mirrors the structure that we had in MATLAB after the initial guesses we have our while loop and that goes through uh, until the end so this is a good start uh, we generated C code for our algorithm um, but let's see if we can make this more compact so you'll notice that we have a lot of files on the left uh, again we have the support uh, the supporting files for uh, INFs and, and, and not a numbers. So that's one of the first things we can do. Uh, using the same trick as before, we can turn off support for non-finite numbers and we can generate code once again. So you see on the left, this is definitely cleaner. Uh, we removed a lot of those uh, extra support files that we don't need. But let's see if there's uh, a little bit more that we can do to streamline this piece of code. So one thing is if you come back to an rt.m, you'll see that here we're using the find command. And if you compare it to the generated code, down here you'll see, again, here's the same comment that was inserted. And by the way, we can turn the comments on or off. Uh, but leaving it on makes it easy for us to kind of track back to our original MATLAB code a little bit. And if you read through this piece of code a little bit more, you'll see that there's about 25 lines of code uh, for that one line um, in MATLAB using the find command. So one of the reasons is that um, we're using the find command and uh, the com MATLAB itself makes a large number of diverse functions easily accessible. So sometimes you run into code where a particular function is simply overkilling the problem, which leads to this in inefficient implementation uh, in terms of performance and memory usage. So in this case, we're actually doing something pretty simple. So let's see if we can rewrite that line of code uh, to generate less C code. So for each iteration of the Newton search algorithm, the um, array here, hist, will be populated with a non-zero number. So if you think about it, let's say um, we have an array with five elements. And if we kind of follow the same command, all that line of code here on line 25 is doing is, is just figuring out um, <clears throat> how you know for example how many elements uh, are less than 0 0.5 in this case it's the number is 2 so all we really need is uh, this number which is a single element and is there a way to get the same result without using the find command and of course there is We use the sum, sum command instead. You'll see that we get the same results as before, and so we can very quickly uh, replace the uh, the command here with an equivalent. So instead of using the find command, we're going to comment this out, save it. And now, if we come back and regenerate code, now taking a look, you can see uh, that it's definitely shorter. Before, we had that about 23 lines of code because of using the find command, and now it's been um, inlined and folded back into uh, the rest of the code. So that's definitely much shorter. And this is one thing that we can do to compact our generated code even further. And in addition to uh, compacting our code, we can also change the look and feel of our code.
Now, if you noticed back in our MATLAB algorithm, <coughs> we had we actually had two uh, files, NRT, and also, which then calls Newton's search algorithm. And when we generated code, by default, for efficiency reasons, it inlined uh, Newton's search algorithm uh, to be within NRT. So suppose we wanted to keep that. Let's suppose we wanted to have two files to more closely uh, mirror the structure in MATLAB. So we can insert this command called coder.inline. Coder so this line of code does not change the behavior of the generated code, uh, but it does tell MATLAB coder not to inline this file. So let's regenerate code. So here you can see that um, here's nrt.c uh, again you'll see that this matches more closely with what we were seeing before and over here we're calling Newton's search algorithm dot C and that's been separated out into uh, a separate function and the rest of the code is the same as what we saw before so I hope this demo gave you a good idea of the types of things that you can do to make the generated code uh, the way you want it to be